uh, a big thanks to the organizers for giving this opportunity. Uh, it's like a it's like a February meet before the March meet in India. So it's a it, many thanks to the organizers. And I've given this opportunity to talk about uh, the onset of fluidation in ill stress materials from the from the microscopic simulations that I have done with Pinaki and Kisten. So let's forget the difficult parts here for the time being. And what I am going to show you about this was my morning selfie. So, and a, a very difficult task I had in mind, and I had to brush my teeth. Okay, so, so what I tried, so what I did, so basically first, uh, to squeeze this tube, I first jump from height H to make it squeeze. So guess what, what happened? Nothing happened. So then, what I did, I tried again. So this time, I was jumped from a double height. And this time also, the tube only gets deformed, except that nothing happened. So then what I did, so I was disappointed a lot. And then, this time, I'm jumping from even, uh, from 3H. And this time, the tube gets squeezed, and also the paste came out. So, and the, so the paste starts flowing, and I could brush my teeth. So what did we learn from this thing? So the key message is a toothpaste flows like a liquid through the squeeze tube. And if you do this experiment, you have, actu uh, you have actually read the first line of this review. So, so now, now there is a question. So which kind of material actually I'm talking about? Can anybody guess? So it's basically I'm talking about the ill stress materials. So that was there in my first slide. So, uh, so these materials are susceptible to the applied stress and they fluidize beyond a critical stress. So that was my point. So, and the behavior and the, and, and the rheology of these kind of materials are actually given by the flow curve of this kind of uh, uh, flow curve, which says how the stress depends on the strain rate. So what you can see, and, 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 and the generic form of this kind of flow curve is given by the herschel buckley law. So which says that it goes as the power law of, of the applied stress, and this sigma y, sigma y is the, is the, is the, is the ill stress. So now I'm talking about a mechanism that I have actually followed to understand the onset of fluidization. So, so this is creep. So this, I'm having the same flow curve, I'm, I'm, try, try, I'm trying to understand the mechanism behind this. So what I'm doing here, I'm actually imposing a different stress. So I start from zero, and then I, I in, keep on increasing the stress, and at some point, it shows, sorry, there is a typo. So it's basically strain rate. So then there is, at some, uh, so I'm increasing the stress, and at some point, when it crosses that particular threshold, it starts flowing. So then I have a non-zero strain rate. So basically, it starts flowing at that point. So this uh, this is a creep mechanism, and this has been this have been ob observed in numerous experiments over the years. And what uh, so these are uh, uh, one particular study was done on the colloidal hard sphere. So there we can see that this is the strain versus time, and this is the strain rate versus time. So we can see that beyond a critical threshold, it shows a burst in the burst in the strain. And there is, thus, there is an onset of shear. But less than the threshold, it, it only gets stuck. So we'll try to understand this kind, the, 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 the onset of flow in this kind of materials. And we'll, uh, we'll try to realize via the num numerical simulations. So, so this is a very well-known picture in the glasses. And for this, uh, yes? The last part, yes? Um, that is strain versus time, right? Which one? This is strain versus the. This is strain versus time. This is strain versus time. This is strain rate versus time. So this is more of an yield strain rather than an yield stress. No, no, no. This is basically for the, the, each of the plots have been obtained by for a imposed shear. So imposed stress. What do you mean by shear? I, I, stress? Imposed stress. Yes, it's shear. It's basically for uh, imposed uh, stress. So for some stress, I'm getting a stuck state, and I'm then I, I have but, changed the imposed stress. No, Sigma y basically it's a so basically it, so it's the magnitude of the no, stress you are imposing. Sigma y is, yes. I'm asking you how do you get sigma y from this plot? No, from here. Okay. So basically, what I am saying. So when it is stuck, 
and, you, and you increasing the stress, you can have a situation where it is flowing. And that flow is, is understood by the bust in the, in the strain. So all I am saying, from here I cannot identify the exact sigma y. No, because it says sigma is equal to sigma It's basically beyond some threshold. Beyond some threshold, it is going on this side. It gets absorbed and in, in other case, it's, it's flowing. Okay, I'll, I, I, I think, I think, I think. Which one? Those dashed lines there, those are yes. the yield strain. Yes, 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 yes. No, 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 no it's not. Yield strain is, it's, uh, okay. okay. Okay, so I'm doing the creep experiment with the glassy materials, and so what kind of glass I'm looking at. So basically, glasses show that the, the, the roughness in the landscape actually determines the, uh, the mechanical properties, and those mechanical properties are actually hidden in their, in their landscape. So what I have shown here, I have shown a uh, kind of landscape here. Uh, it's a cartoon of landscape. So where I'm showing that uh, there are different class of uh, points, class of states, which could be obtained by, uh, by, uh, by, uh, by using different protocols. And these are the low line glasses, and these are the high line glasses, and these are the intermediate uh, uh, glasses. So, what, so basically, energetically, this, is, this has got a lower energy, and this, is one, this one is having higher energy. And, 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 and how these this states could be generated was given earlier, was earlier taught by uh, Srikanth. So, so, so what we understand from this, this work that, okay, so given these three different points, we can show that the local yield, yield, yielding behavior is different. And that is determined by, the, by their initial thermal origin. So, so as, the, as the rigidity of, of, of the material is increased, so you can see their yielding property also, also uh, changes with time, I, uh, also change. So now what we have, sh uh, what we have done, so we, and also uh, the, the, these are the constant, uh, so these are the, the quasi-static simulations uh, done by the Patine group. And what they have shown that for three different uh, glasses, the, 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 the behavior is distinct. And this is the, and this one, the slow, the low line glass is actually showing a brittle like behavior. For this case, it's more of a ductile. And this is the, but what is interesting here, we can see that the static yield threshold is different for three different glasses. However, they, when, when we obtain the flow curve for these materials, they are actually identical. So this is a twist. So now we have to understand the onset of fluidization for these materials. So what we have done, we have taken the same system that was uh, uh, taken by uh, this group. And so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a binary Lennard-Jones mixture. And what we do, we solve the DPD equation of motions. To, and, and also we use a feedback control scheme where we actually look at, with the imposed trace, I'm looking at the response of the material. And the, the feedback that we use is like this. So basically, this is the imposed trace, and this is the response of the material. And this determines the onset of the shear. And this mechanism successfully show that it actually resembles the creep. So using, this, uh, using the earlier states, we actually look at the creep of these kind of materials. So we can see for different imposed stress, we can have a similar behavior that, that, that was seen in the experiments. So with the increasing stress, we can see that the, 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 um, the time scale of fluidization actually decreases. And, and, and also, and this is for one particular study, the ESL1 and the GQ1. We kept the HTL1 apart for, for this particular study. And, and so the ESL and the GQ has actually got a different uh, onset point. But, uh, and what is interesting here, and, and also the similar behavior actually we can see from the strain rate as well. So, but one interesting thing is that, that this point and this point, the onset point, uh, the outburst of the stress and the onset of shear, the, these two points are different. So the underlying key message from this study was this, the sample with the different thermal history has got a distinct Ill static yield threshold, and also, and, and, and below the threshold, the system is stuck. So to understand the microscopic beha behavior behind this onset of flow, we do a special analysis scheme. So this, this we, uh, this we uh, do using a coarse gain description. So what we do is we course in the system into multiple grids and look at the, the local fluidization behavior in, in each of the grids. So this is, uh, this is one of the, so, and what we try to understand is this, the spatial mobilization in each of the grids. So what we can see, 
So for I'm looking at the evolution of the system as the material, uh, uh, as the material, uh, as, as the experiment is uh, done with time. So you can see there are, even though the system is stuck, even though the system is stuck, uh, there are some mo local mobilities here, which at long time, eventually it gets damped. So this is for a case when the, the impose trace is less than the threshold. However, just only uh, if I increase the stress uh, with very small amount, look at the value of the stress. Here is 5441 and here 0.5443. So it's only the difference is, uh, is, at the, is very minimal and only with that uh, small change, we can see there is a rapid divergence in the strain. So in this case, you can see there is a change in this part. So just wait for this movie. So, and in this case, the system uh, eventually shows flow. And which, you can see the same point gets heated, gets mobilized, and also up to this point, most of the things are same. But then, suddenly, as, the point, as this one reaches here, and you can see that the there was earlier a backbone which gets uh, the, uh, dissolved in this case. So now everything gets fluidized here. So to understand a bit more, what we tried uh, to understand, uh, uh, so we compute a spatial overlap function, so which uh, is a fraction of slow particles in a particular zone. So now we'll, sh we'll show that how this, uh, so what separates this, these two states. So this is, uh, so in this case, this is a non-flowing case, and this is a flowing case. You can see that this, the points are mostly same, but here I'm showing that what happens here. So that separates the, these two points. So the values means, one means when it's completely stuck, and zero means it's fluidized. Okay, I'll take two for minutes. Okay, so now what we try to understand from these maps, one is the fluidization, so we compute the fluidization maps. From there, we try to understand what is the particular, how, uh, how a particular zone gets fluidized, and also the spatial variance of, the, uh, of this, uh, this particular uh, maps. So now we can see that, uh, so these are, the, uh, these are the fluidization maps. It shows that how the, uh, the uh, and also it shows the spatial, role of spatial heterogeneity in, in, in this yielding process. So this is a case, so basically the maps show that the, the, the local time scale associated with the, with the fluidization. So at what time a particular zone uh, gets fluidized. So you can see that here I have a backbone which gets fluidized and, uh, upon increasing stress. This is for the ESL and this is for the GQ. However, the thresholds are different. And now we, we, what we show here, we showed, so these are the microscopic uh, fluctuations that uh, we obtained from the, uh, the spatial overlap maps. And these are the sample to sample fluctuations. So it's a macroreological fluctuation. And what we show here with these plots, that the macroreological fluctuations are accompanied by the large scale fluctuations as the system yields. And then, uh, so let us summarize the things that we have, the message that I have uh, shown here. So we looked at the local mechanical response in glass samples with different thermal history via creep. And then uh, we look at the samples and we show that the samples with different thermal history has got different mechanical response and also they have different static thresholds. However, their uh, dynamic threshold is the same. We, we have seen the, uh, the, the role of spatial heterogeneity and how it determines the local fluidation behavior. And also we have shown that how the onset of fluidation occurs with the large spatial fluctuations. With this, I want to thank. Uh, I want to stop and I'd like to acknowledge uh, my French counterparts who is now, uh, the Viswas is now at IIT Palakkar and B.S. Chang um, uh, and who is a, who is a postdoc with John Louis and also so, and Sefipra and IMSC for funding and hosting. Thank you.